go. One, two, three. Ooh, ooh, yep, there it was. While exploring for rare rattlesnakes in northern Florida, we came across tons of these giant gold and silk orb weavers, the largest native orb weaver in North America. Now, I've been working with spiders for years, and I've even taken a few bites, and it's gotten me curious. What are the bites of different groups of spiders actually like? I've done wolf spiders and fishing spiders, but in all my years of handling orb weavers, I have never actually been bitten. And what better orb weaver to test than the king of them all, the banana spider? While hiking along a path, I found a perfect one on a web stretched out just above my head. A lot of people who live in the deep south will know this spider as the banana spider. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this spider down and we're gonna see if this is actually something you should fear when you're out in the woods. Have a look at that thing. It is so creepy looking. You might be asking Spencer, are you nervous to have a huge spider like this walking on you? And honestly, not really. This spider I'll say is a little bit itchier the texture of its feet are a little bit itchier than most spiders I've had walk on me before, so that's a little different. But in a video like this, where I'm gonna be bitten by a spider that's as creepy looking as this spider is, I wanted to give this little lady a chance to clear her name. I wanted to show you that I'm in no immediate danger if one of these spiders is walking on me. See, with orb weavers, they're not like wolf spiders or recluse spiders or widow spiders where they hide underneath stuff. So bites from these spiders are not gonna happen when you're sticking your hands into a cabinet without looking or something. A bite from this spider is usually gonna happen outside. And it's gonna happen in basically one situation. Most people encounter orb weavers, just like this and many other species, because they spin their webs in large open areas. These spiders are hunting flying insects and those big orb shaped webs are designed to intercept the insects as they zip by. So large open spots are great for these animals to spin their webs. Where it becomes a problem for people is when you're out walking on a trail and you're not looking, you end up with one of these spiders right on your face because you walk through their web without paying attention and they start crawling all over you frantically because their whole web has been disturbed and they're freaking out, you're freaking out. And the bite's gonna happen when you kind of just haphazardly grab the spider off your face and throw it. That grab, if you're not gentle enough with it, will scare the spider and it'll bite you on the face or on the hand. And that is where orb weaver bites usually happen. And it's usually not that bad, but look at the fangs on this spider. This spider has considerably bigger fangs than most orb weavers because it is also the largest orb weaver. So I expect the bite to hurt. I expect it not to be fun, but I wanna show you that this is not something that is going to intentionally seek to bite. In previous spider bite experiments, it took a little bit of time to get each of the individual animals to bite. Spiders are not out to get us. And so in order to bite, they actually have to feel as if they need to defend themselves. This orb weaver was a whole new level of that. Come on, no. Wow, no bite. Numerous times, this spider wiggled itself free, threw me off of it, and the pace with which she was walking over my skin, it was difficult to get her to settle down so that I could actually do a proper pin and induce a bite. Here we go. No, 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 no. No, get on there. <laughs> After about 20 minutes of working with the spider, trying to get something out of her, I was finally able to corner her on the side of my forearm. Here we go. One, two, three. Ooh, ooh, yep, there it was. That's it. With fangs like those, I was kind of expecting a bit more of a punch. The spider gave me a solid little pinch, um, enough to notice, but it, it really wasn't more than a four or five out of 10 on the pain scale. And then nothing. Slight tingling afterwards, like an ant sting or something. Like just a little bit of, little bit of subtle, like spicy itch that told me that histamines were going off in my skin, but I had a little tiny red pin prick where it looks like only one of the fangs went in, but that was it. I am remarkably underwhelmed with the bite of the golden silk spider. And it's kind of fascinating that a really prominent, striking looking spider like that has such a mild bite. That, that, that warning coloration of the golden silk spider is totally for show. I wanna talk for a minute on orb weaving spider biology. There's a reason why these bites are not that serious. See, these spiders weave their webs in open areas in hopes of catching flying insects as they zip by. Think about a lot of flying insects though. They're usually smaller, more lightweight, and 
have more delicate bodies. A lot of the hardier beetles, larger moths, if a bird flies through that web, yeah, they're gonna get sticky web in their face, but they're gonna be able to shake that right off and get free. The spider's not gonna be able to eat that. Pound for pound, this is among the strongest material on the planet, and it's incredibly sticky. But because it's so thin and stretched so taut across these open areas, a lot of larger flying things can just break right through it or shake free. The millions of years that these spiders are evolving on the planet, their venom has only been needed for smaller, weaker bodied flying insects, something that you wouldn't need an extremely potent venom for. And since amphibians, reptiles, and birds are all gonna be too strong to get caught in the web, this spider doesn't need venom that acts on vertebrate animals. So a bite on a human, it makes sense that you'd feel the fang, you'd feel the, the poke, the pinch of the actual fangs and a little bit of light tingling from whatever, whatever cytotoxic effect the venom actually has. But it makes sense that the bite is not serious at all, given the types of prey the golden silk spider is eating. And that is why dry bite or no, I honestly don't think the bite of the golden silk spider or the banana spider is anything to really worry about. Even the giant golden silk spider, the largest orb weaver in North America, is no threat to humans. That being said, there are plenty of orb weavers out there that have really interesting adaptations when it comes to venom. And the most unique of those is the hackled orb weaver. If you wanna learn about its unique secret, check out this video right here. And until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.